let's take a look at conservation of energy. The principle of conservation of energy is usually stated this way. Energy cannot be created or destroyed. It can only change forms or be transferred. This is a powerful idea. It shows up in a lot of different sciences, so maybe you've seen it before in chemistry or something. But in physics, it really is foundational. It's a very important concept that a lot of physics is built upon. And it's a powerful idea, too. Um, there's something similar that can be said about mass. Mass also can't be created or destroyed. Mass can just move from one place to another. But this idea of conservation of energy is not true, or it cannot be extended, to things like force, acceleration, velocity, and displacement. Force, acceleration, velocity, and displacement, all those things, yeah, they can start up and stop. Um, those are not conserved quantities. But energy is, and that's what makes energy so powerful. Now, before we start applying the idea of conservation of energy, first we have to define something called a system. And a system is just a collection of objects. It's a collection of things that we're going to put in a group, and that's called a system. So a system could consist of one object, could consist of two objects, it could be lots of objects, it could be a box and the Earth together, it could be a spaceship and an astronaut together, it could be any objects we want to group together, and that would be called a system. And the way that we define a system is going to be different in different problems. And often you can solve a problem using different systems. But we'll approach that a little bit later. For now, just know that a system is a collection of objects. Let's say we have a system. And I'll draw it right here. Nice little dotted line. And there's stuff inside of the system. Could be whatever. It's however we define it. But if this system is closed. If it is a closed system, what we mean by that is a closed system is a system where no work is done on that system from the outside. Now, if we combine that with the idea of conservation of energy, because conservation of energy, remember, it says energy can't be created or destroyed. So that means that in a closed system, if energy isn't created or destroyed, in a closed system, no work is done, no energy is transferred from the outside, then that means that this is true. EI equals EF, where EI represents the total energy in the system at the beginning, and EF represents the total energy in the system at the end. Right? Because if you have a system with a certain amount of energy, and energy can't be just created or destroyed inside the system, and if you aren't adding any energy to the system or removing any energy from the system, because it's closed, then the total energy at the beginning has to equal the total energy at the end. Another way we could say that is that the change in the energy in the system equals zero. All right. Now let's say we have a different type of system. Let's say that there is a system where some kind of work is done. We would call that an open system. So an open system is a system where work is done on the system from outside. And again, because of conservation of energy, we can write down this statement. The energy of the system at the beginning, plus the work done on the system from the outside, is equal to the total energy of the system at the end. Or if we rearrange that a little bit, the work, or the energy transferred to the system, is equal to the change in the energy of the system. Okay, let, let's try applying this. Let's, let's try applying this to a specific system. Let's say we have a falling object. So if we have an object starting out at this height and it's starting at rest, and then it falls toward the ground, and we want to know how fast it's moving when it reaches the ground. And one technique that we use when we solve these kinds of problems is to draw something called an LOL chart. LOL chart, just because it looks like LOL when you draw it before you put any information in there. So the idea of the LOL chart is on the left, in the first L, we're going to create a bar graph of the different types of energy 
that the system has at the beginning. And in the L at the end, we're going to draw a little bar graph of all the different types of energy that the system has after. And then in the O, I'm going to indicate what is in my system. All right. Well, what should we put in the system in this case? Well, I said that there's no necessarily right or wrong way to do a problem. Many times there's multiple ways to solve a problem. But let's try putting the box and the earth in the system. The box and the earth. Now, the reason why I'm going to put the earth in my system here, it seems like the box is the only thing I care about, right? I want to know the speed of the box at the end. But if we put the earth in the system, the reason why that's useful is because then the gravitational force is internal to my system. The gravitational force is between objects in my system, between the box and the earth. If the earth were not in my system, then the gravitational force would be an external force that would do work on the system. And we'll see that later on. But if I keep the earth in my system, then the gravitational force is not going to add or remove energy from the system. So in other words, if my system is made up of the box and the earth, then I have no interactions that are adding or removing energy from the system. And if I have that situation, then it's a closed system. And if it's a closed system, I can write down this equation, EI equals EF. The total energy of the system at the beginning equals the total energy of the system at the end. And let's go to our little bar chart. So at the beginning, let's think about what type of energy this system has at the beginning. Well, the box starts up there, and so that means it has gravitational potential energy. And it starts at rest, so that means it has zero kinetic energy. And there's no springs involved, so let's not even worry about spring potential energy. But at the beginning, it has gravitational potential energy, so the bar graph would look like this. In the end, it's going to reach the ground. And in the end, it's not going to have any gravitational potential energy anymore. And it's going to be moving. So it will have kinetic energy. All right. So now we can go down to our equation. Well, let's see. At the beginning, it only had gravitational potential energy. Well, we have an equation for that. We can write it down. It's MGH. And I'll even say MGHI. HI because that's what we named the initial height here. And that's got to equal the total energy of the system at the end. Well, the total energy of the system at the end is it's all kinetic energy. So that's 1 half mv squared. And I'll even put Vf the F for final speed. So there we go. There's an equation. If I know the initial height, we always know G. Don't even need to know the mass because the mass would cancel out. But I can solve for the final speed of that box. Hmm. Didn't even have to use any forces, nothing like that. Didn't have to use any kinematic equations. Just used energy. Let's look at it from a different perspective now. Let's let's try it again, but let's let's put only the box in the system. So, same situation. Here's the LOL chart. Only the box is in the uh, system. No Earth. So, if the Earth is not in the system, then that means the gravitational force is doing work on this system. There is work being done on this system by the Earth. The Earth is pulling the object down and that's going to increase the energy of the box. So let's think about this. Um, in this LOL chart, at the beginning, it doesn't have any kinetic energy. And in this situation, it also doesn't have gravitational potential energy. This seems a little bit odd. There's no gravitational potential energy though, because gravitational potential energy involves the Earth, and the Earth is not in the system. The Earth is now an outside influence. So the Earth is going to interact with the box, apply a force on the blocks, that gravitational force, and it's going to do work which is going to transfer energy to the box. And in the end, the box will have kinetic energy. So energy is added to the box now by the Earth. So this is no longer a closed system, this is now an open system. So here's our equation for an open system. The total energy at the beginning plus the work done from outside is equal to the total energy at the end. Well, 
the system begins with zero energy. Then work is done on it, and then we end up with kinetic energy. So 1 half mvf squared. Well, let's see, the work, hmm. Well, the work done on the system is equal to fs cosine theta. And the force that's doing the work here is the gravitational force, which is mg. And the displacement, well, the displacement of the box in this situation is hi downward, right? It goes from hi down to zero. So the displacement of the box was equal to hi in a downward direction. And let's see, the angle, hmm. Well, the angle between the force and the displacement is zero degrees because the force, the gravitational force, is downward and the displacement is downward. So the angle between those two things is zero degrees. So, let's see, I get mg times hi the cosine of zero degrees, the cosine of zero degrees is one. So I end up with mg hi is equal to one half m vf squared, which is exactly the same equation that we had when we did this example differently with a different system. We got the exact same equation, we just looked at it in two different ways. Let's look at one more example. Let's look at a situation where we have a loop in a track. So there's a cart, and the cart is going to start out attached to this compressed spring. Okay, And then after the spring releases the cart, the cart's going to move forward and go up through the loop. And we want to know what the speed of the cart is at the top of the loop. And let's say at the top of the loop it's at a height h, f, f for final. So let's draw our LOL chart here. Well, LOL, okay. Well, for our system, let's put the cart, the spring, and the earth in the system. So all the involved things in the system. And in this first chart, we're going to indicate what kind of energy it has at the beginning. Well, at the beginning, the cart's going to be at rest. And the spring is compressed. And it's on the ground. So it doesn't have kinetic energy. It doesn't have gravitational potential energy. But there is spring potential energy contained in that compressed spring. Okay. And then at the end, well, let's see, it's going to be at the top of the loop, so it's going to have some kinetic energy, it'll be moving, and it'll have some gravitational potential energy, but there won't be any more spring energy because the spring is going to have given up its energy to the cart. So let's write this down. Okay, well, there's no external forces here. There's nothing from the outside interacting with the cart. If we do that, well, the total energy at the beginning equals the total energy at the end. Well, what's the total energy at the beginning? Well, it's all spring potential energy, so that's 1 half k delta x squared. That's the total energy at the beginning. And that equals the total energy at the end. Well, at the end it has kinetic energy and gravitational potential energy. So in the end, it has 1 half mv squared, mvf squared, so that's the total kinetic energy at the end, plus the total potential energy at the end, which is mg h final. So this equation describes the situation. The left side of the equation tells you how much total energy there is at the beginning. The right side of the equation tells you the total amount of energy you have at the end. When you're solving these problems, you're going to get a different equation each time. Maybe not each time, every now and then you might get two that look similar. But the idea is that you're applying the ideas to new situations to get different equations for your system.